Next up on Discovery Life, it's the show you've all been waiting for. Debate that. Welcome, one and all, welcome to Debate That, the show where we're all going to get into some real masturbating. But before we all explode from excitement, it's time to meet our contestants. Hello, I'm Charlotte Gorman Glass. I'm a fully qualified senior psychiatrist for the last 15 years, leading expert in the field of psychopathological research, and principal lecturer at Cambridge. And I don't mean the shoddy idea of us. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I am the long dead founder of psychoanalysis, Dr. Sigmund Freud, and my preferred scientific method is to make up some kind of vile shit about your unconscious mind and somehow just link it all back to sex. <laughs> well, well, two titans in their fields, both starting off on equal footing, but for how much longer? Yes, you guessed it, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're talking about psychology, psychiatry, psychopathology, and lovely psych psychozoology, but not physiology, not physiotherapy, and most certainly not physics, because today we're focusing on the real sciences, yes, and the real man of the mind, so to speak. So let me hear you, ladies and gentlemen, let me hear you roar. Give it up for the two participants. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> And today our contestants will be debating the cause of his equinophobia, that is to say, fear of horses. <coughs> so, without much further ado, ladies first, Dr. Gorman Gast, what are we thinking? Yes, most irrational phobias are learned, you see, probably in this case by some sort of conditioning. I suggest that a child has had at least one, but more likely, repeated negative experiences with equines in the past, leading him to associate them with something to be avoided, and thus, that seems reasonable, I suppose. Treatment, exposure therapy. The gradual exposure to the fear stimulus will over time desensitize the patient. He could look at pictures of horses in a safe environment, watch videos of them, uh, observe the real specimens at a distance before eventually being introduced to them at the Finally, a short pony ride should fully extinguish any previous condition. Rubbish! Absolute rubbish! Excuse me? Stretching the audience's credulity somewhat, do you not think? When that of the entire scientific community come to that? So you disagree then, sir? I do. So you would recommend drug therapy, would you? Because that's hardly a Actually, I was about to say that clearly the boy's father has a massive willy. <laughs> and uh, the boy is just projecting his fear of the father onto the horse, as the horse also has large tackle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, we do, This is exactly what I believe, and I can prove it if you would like to see my uh, research. Uh, okay, so you think that the boy was scared of his father, then? No, uh, the boy sees the father as a rival for his own erotic love interest in his mother, and he may or may not try to kill him. Wait! Five year old fancies his mum? Yeah, obviously. Dr. Gormagas said, really, is quite simple. You know, my mother is rather a saucy fox. Stop giving me the pair of you. Explain yourself. I just did rather more succinctly than you did with your own unproven hypothesis. Oh, I see. So, being scared of black beauty because your father has a massive throbbing in their huge copies. Far more scientific and sensible than my exposure therapy, which stretches credulity to breaking point. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, my father had a black beauty, if you know what I mean. Look at that, that too. Five. I'm going to round two then, Phil. Sigmund, your turn to go first. A woman keeps dreaming of a train entering a tunnel. What is the reason? Clearly, she is a randy little slut who needs a good hard shag. Yes, yes. <laughs> Dream analysis. That's irrefutable, that one. Round three, then. A death is compulsive disorder. Someone is unable to control their thoughts or feelings or actions in regards to certain repeated, shall we say, uh, rituals or routines or Yes, that is rather an overgeneralization, but I would recommend CBT or other such talk therapies in combination with my previously mentioned exposure therapy and in combination with some drugs to alleviate any anxiety in the short term. Of course, there's no clear cause. <laughs> no clear I'm cause? This is simply yeah. poppycock. And poppycock. I appreciate you sneaking cock into that. <laughs> 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 it really is very useful. Thank you. <laughs> Clearly, 
the causes of OCD are quite simple. Mm -hmm. As a child grows up, they have to learn to poop. And should the parents try to force the child to control their bowel movement before they are ready, they may instead rebel, retaining their poop. And this will lead them to become an adult who is obsessively tidy and hating good mess. You don't seriously predict this, shite, do you? <laughs> of course, I am sure that you yourself may have referred to somebody obsessive as anal case clothes. Well, <laughs> with that stinger, that ends the round. And with it, the session. And we have a very oh, no, clear winner. Don't. We have one more round to go. No, we don't. Round four. <laughs> He's jammy bugger. He's totally obsessed with sex. He thinks that everyone except himself is in love with their parents' genitalia. And I cannot even name his discipline without slipping anal into the word. Psycho-anal. Clever, clever. <laughs> he sucks on that cigar like it's going out of fashion. You want to talk refreshing, you pearly maid and bastard? Just take a long, hard look at that bad boy in your bag and tell me what that means. Because I think that the evidence is pretty clear if we follow your reasoning, you dirty old git. You just love sucking. Control yourself, my dear. You are become confused. She has. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's just say sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs>